Short sentences drawn from long experience tested in the crucible of time and suffering. That's how our teacher, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, describes the wisdom that we'll hear today on Through the Bible. I'm your host, Steve Schwetz, inviting you to join us as we continue our five-year journey through the whole Word of God. We'll pick up in Proverbs chapter 16 in just a minute. So while you grab your Bible and find your place, let me share a couple of letters from our fellow listeners. First, we've got an email from Shirley in Louisiana. Today, I finished my second tour of the Bible on the Bible bus. Way to go, Shirley, which has deepened my walk with my Lord. It took me many readings of Job, two with Dr. McGee, to have my eyes open to see that God used Satan to show Job his sin of pride. I'm so thankful that the Lord has led me to be a small part of this ministry. It is a joy to be a part of the World Prayer Team, and I'm grateful to have the ability to support this ministry. It is a blessing to hear about all the local heart languages in India alone that are being translated into. I'm so thankful for the open administration of this ministry by you, Steve, Greg, and all the staff and producers around the world. These lessons have helped me as a Sunday Bible study leader by drawing me deeper into his word. Thank you all for your faithfulness. I continue to pray for you all. I've been a World Prayer Team member from the beginning, and what a pleasure that has been to see God working in nations that are closed to him. Thank you for sharing this ministry. Well, thanks so much, Shirley, for writing and encouraging us. And thank you for your faithful prayers and your financial support that keep the Bible bus traveling the world in more than 120 languages worldwide. Now, next, we've got a note from Tracy in Lincoln, Nebraska. Very often, the message of the day is just what I needed, either for myself or to share with my children in their time of need. I praise and thank God for men like Dr. McGee and my own pastor who explained the Bible verse by verse, always expounding the truth no matter what. My prayers are with you. I attend a local church and am grateful for the opportunity to have you extend our learning through your broadcasts. Thanks, Tracy, and I'm glad that you found a Bible teaching church, and I'm glad that you join us on the Bible bus each day. And we would pray that God would continue to bless you and your family as you study his word together. Now, here's an email. This is from William in Auburn, California. It is really hard to admit that for many years after my acceptance of God's offer of salvation, I continued to attempt to walk the walk of the Christian life by my own willpower. As a follower of Christ, I wonder why it has taken me so long to understand the simple fact that that my own strength avails nothing. Jesus said, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listening to your programs, the light has finally dawned on this troubled Christian. Christ has already done the heavy lifting. All that remains for me is to accept his finished work and allow Christ's majesty and grace to live through me. There is a big difference between witnessing because I am supposed to and witnessing because I cannot help but want others to know the joy of the Lord. Well, thanks so much for the encouragement, William. That's a terrific reminder for all of us. How's God using his word to change and challenge you? Maybe letter month at Through the Bible is the perfect time for you to write and tell us about it. You can email us at biblebus at ttb.org or mail your note to box 7100, Pasadena, California, 91109, or in Canada, box 25325, London, Ontario, N6C, 6B1. Now let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as your word goes out today, we pray that lives are changed and souls are saved. And we would ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now here's Through the Bible with Dr. J. Vernon McGee. Now back to the 16th chapter of Proverbs today. And this is a very rich section. And I don't want to get bogged down, but... It's very important, I think, these sententious sentences drawn from long experience, short sentences from long experience, tested in the crucible of time and of suffering also, and made rich and real by the power of the Holy Spirit for us today. 
and Proverbs are for all time, although they were written to the young man specifically that was an Israelite under the Mosaic law. But it widens out and speaks to all of our hearts in a very definite way. Rich and poor, male and female, black and white, it pays no attention to that. This is a book that can reach down and touch us. Now, it opens chapter 16, verse 1, like this. The purposes of the heart are of man, but from Jehovah is the answer of the tongue. I think that probably our human proverb that would go along with this is man proposes, but God disposes. And that reveals the fact that as the Word of God says, it's not in man that liveth to direct his way. He may plan, and you and I may plan and arrange things, but I tell you, when the time comes to speak or act, God is the one that is going to have the last word, and he is the one that the answer must come from him. We may make a great boats, but only God can give us the answer. Now, verse 2, "...all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but Jehovah weigheth the Spirit." And here again we have an example of that, and it's been stated in many ways. Before we've seen it, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. The thing that any of you that have dealt with lost people and have spoken to them about their salvation, or you've been a preacher or a teacher, you know that the answer that you get most time is, I don't need to be saved. A man's clean in his own eyes. I've had that thrown back at me, hurled at me as even a challenge. Why, I'm all right. What is wrong with me? I'm willing to stand before God. I'm an honest man and that sort of thing. And there are a great many Christians. They think that their walk is perfect before God. And the whole problem is wrapped up in just this one verse of Scripture. It's found over in 1 John, the first chapter. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, keeps on cleansing us from all sin. Uh, hold up the mirror of the Word of God to your life, and it'll reveal things that are not quite right, that you haven't measured up to God's standard. You may measure up to the standard of the Chamber of Commerce, and they may make you the man of the year. They may reward you and give you a plaque in your club that you're a member of. Your church may even pat you on the back. Your neighbors may say that you're a great guy. But my friend, when you see yourself in the light of the Word of God, then you see that you have a need. You see that there's spots there. You see you've come short to the glory of God and that your way may be clean in your own eyes, but not in God's eyes. Because if we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness... We lie, John says, and do not the truth. Now, he's speaking to Christians. Well, I think there are a great many folks sitting in a church pew as comfortable as you please. In fact, they point their finger at other folk and say, Look, they're not so good. <laughs> I am. I'm really all right. The fact of the matter is, some of the saints today have asked God to move over. They want to sit next to him and look down and judge their fellow Christians and there are a lot of folk in the world that feel like that they can do it themselves. But the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. But it's Jehovah who weigheth the spirits. God searches you. In fact, the matter is the law was never given. There are many folk that have so misunderstood what we said in Galatians. They say, you say that the law is no good today, that the law is inoperative. I didn't say that you listen very carefully, you would have heard me say that the law can't save you because the law is good. Paul said it's good. It's a mirror. It reveals to you you've come short of the glory of God. 
And my friend, if you look at the law of God and then you still say you're measuring up to it, you haven't seen the law yet. You really don't know what the law is really saying. The law demands perfection of you. And you and I can't produce it. Therefore, you and I need a Savior. And that's what the law will do. It's a schoolmaster to bring you to Christ, take you by the hand and bring you to the cross and say, little fella, what you need is a Savior. You need a Savior. That's what the law says. Law's good, but not to save you. It can't save you. And if you're going to go around and take the position that this proverb says, the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, and even with the Word of God before you. May I say, there's none blind like those who will not see. Because remember, Jehovah weighs the spirits. And have you ever seen a pair of scales that can weigh spirits? Well, I'll tell you one, the Word of God. It's a mirror. It's a pair of scales to measure you. And it says you've come short. You didn't measure up. Well, we better move on. These Proverbs are, oh, they are terrific, friends. Now, verse 3, "...commit thy works unto Jehovah, and thy thoughts shall be established." Now, the word here, commit, is a very interesting word. It could be rendered roll. You know, just roll your affairs over upon the Lord, and he'll take charge. In fact, that's actually the way that I got saved, because I ran away to Detroit, got in sin, came home, and my, how my conscience bothered me. And then a preacher told me that being justified by faith, we have peace with God. God wasn't mad at me that he bore my sins. And so there are many times even to this good day that at night, if I can't sleep, I like to just roll over and just say, Lord Jesus, I'm resting on you. Just roll over. (laughs) Rest in him. Commit thy works unto Jehovah. Commit the whole thing. Many of you right now worried about tomorrow, next week, next year, about the future. How's this going to work out? I'm doing this. How will it work out? Well, why don't you just turn it over to him? Roll it over on him. How wonderful it is. And what a picture this is. Now, in verse 4, we have, Jehovah hath made all things for himself, yea, even the lawless for the day of evil. And my friend, here is strong medicine for you. I tell you, here's a pill that'll send you on a trip. And I mean a trip. Jehovah hath made all things for himself. Have you ever wondered why that the ocean is salty? And why will you have a tide? You say, well, it's according to certain laws. Who made the law? You know why the ocean is salty? Because God wanted it that way. The Lord Jesus was the creator, and he wanted it that way. Somebody says, well, that's due to a certain law that the land has been filtered, the salt has made the ocean that way. By the way, who put the salt in the land to begin with? A very interesting thing is that I don't care what you do with evolution. You go back to a time when you've got to have somebody make something to get the thing started. (laughs) You know who started it? God did. And not only that, he made all these things for himself. What today is the chief end of man? Well, I learned that in the catechism a long time ago, and it's good. What is the chief end of man? The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Now, I don't care who you are today or wherever you are. God created you for his glory. Nobody says, what about that drunkard in the street down there? What about that crooked man today? And I won't identify him any more than that. Somebody will say, you're picking on that group. Well, I'm not, but you could find crooked men in a whole lot of groups. That lost man, what about him? You mean he's for the glory of God? My friend, this is a strong pill. Are you ready to swallow it? All of that is for the glory of God. Somebody says, I don't like it. I don't remember he ever asked you whether you liked it or not. He never asked me whether I liked it or not. 
And very frankly, there are certain things I don't understand, and I could make some very fine suggestions to the Lord. But the Lord says, Vernon McGee, I didn't make this universe for you. This universe exists for me, and you exist for me. And you're going to be for my glory, whether it'll be for good or bad, whether you are saved or lost. God's accomplishing his purpose today, my friend. Don't you think it's about time you got in step with God? He's the one running the thing. A great many people want to make sure they're going with the crowd, going with the thing that's popular, going with the thing that's going to work out. My friend, I don't know how things are going to work out in this world, but I do know this. Ultimately, it's all going to be for the glory of God, (laughs) and even the lawless for the day of evil. God's going to make the wrath of man to praise him. You say, how? I don't know. Let's wait. He'll show us someday. Are you willing to trust him and commit your way to him and get in step with him? The very wonderful thing is that God's moving this universe according to his plan and purpose. The Greeks had a proverb that went like this, the dice of the gods are loaded. And that's exactly what God is saying to you today. Now, whether you like it or not, God is saying to you, don't gamble with me. Don't act like I don't exist. You can play house like I don't exist and that this is your universe and you're going to work it out your way. But I want you to know that if you start gambling with me, you'll lose because, you see, this is my universe, and I make the dice come up my way, not your way. My dice are loaded. (laughs) I already know how they're coming up. You don't. So the thing to do is to get in step with God. A man, the Scripture says, he's a fool that lived without God. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. My, this is a, oh, this is a pill, is it not? And it's one that's hard for man to swallow. Now I'm going to keep moving over here. We find in verse 7 a proverb that I've wrestled with a great deal. It says, When a man's ways please Jehovah, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Now, I've come up with several answers to this. The fact of the matter is, I have searched what other men have had to say on this, and it's been quite interesting. You mean to tell me that if your ways pleased Jehovah that you wouldn't have an enemy? Well, if that were true, then God wouldn't have an enemy, and he does have an enemy. But this is the position. If your ways please Jehovah, Then your enemy may hate you, and by the way, he will hate you if your way pleases Jehovah. And the interesting thing is, these folk, when the chips are down, will admit that God is using you. That's the important thing. The nicest thing that's been said about me in Southern California was actually said by a man who very frankly says he hates me. He says, I hate him, but he says he teaches the Word of God. (laughs) I say, thank you, Mr. Enemy. You're carrying out this proverb. You have to make that kind of an acknowledgement if you're honest in your statement. I love the proverb, by the way. Now, that's my interpretation of it. Now, we have here many very wonderful things that are coming up. And I'm inclined to pass over some of these in order to lift out some that we believe are very important. Let me come to verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. I have that underlined in my Bible. Better is it to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Now, here again is a thrust that's made at that which God hates, pride. That is number one on God's hate parade, and he says he hates it. That is the thing that brought the archangel that we know as Satan. He was Lucifer, son of the morning. Probably the highest creature God created 
until sin was found. What was the sin? It was pride. He tempted to lift himself above God because he was such a great creature that God had created, and he'd given him this power of free choice, which is a tremendous thing. I think that was a very dangerous weapon God put in the hands of some of his creatures. Now, some of them, you take the ducks, they follow an instinct. When it's winter time, they leave Canada and they winter down in South America. And in summertime, why, they summer up in Canada and back and forth they go. And they do it because they're moved by instinct. But man has a free will. A man can stay in Canada in the wintertime. I don't know why he would. And he can go south in summertime. And again, I don't see why he would do that. And so you have here this awful thing known as pride. And this is the thing that was the undoing of that man Haman in the book of Esther. And then there is the story. There's so many in Scripture that illustrate this matter of pride. Absalom. Imagine him rebelling against his father, David. And then there was Goliath, the giant, filled with pride. Ahab filled with pride. All of these. Now, I drop down to verse 24 here. It says, "...pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, health to the bone." Pleasant words. We all like to hear something good, don't we? And we go and buy a newspaper to get the bad news always. And we all subscribe for the paper. And it's too bad people don't read the Bible. It's filled with good news. In fact, that's what the gospel is, good news. And then verse 25, here we are again. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, somebody's going to say to me, say, we've had that before. Well, we have, back in chapter 14, verse 12. And why in the world is it repeated? Well, the Lord didn't want you to miss this one, so he gave it to us the second time. The way that seemeth right unto a man. And then we have in verse 27, an ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is a burning fire. There are certain folk, and I'm sure all of us know somebody like this. I could write down a friend of mine next to this. That friend of mine, when I wanted to know what was going on in church circles, I always contacted him. I'd call him up, and he would generally start in something like this. He'd say, by the way, Dr. McGee, have you heard? And you know I hadn't heard. If you wanted to latest and the juiciest. You call that brother, and you say, well, was he a godly man? I don't know. I've often wondered about him. He's gone now. Where he went, I haven't the foggiest notion. But the Scripture says, an ungodly man diggeth up evil. This fellow was always digging it up. I don't know. I can't sit in judgment on him. He certainly made a profession. And then we have here verse 28. A froward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. As we said the other day, that some people will believe anything if it's whispered to them. And there are those that will go around and whisper things. Separate friends. And then verse 33, The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. I have written this verse over the book of Esther. The Feast of Purim was a feast that is based on a day in which they cast lots. But you see again, and I close with this, the dice of the gods are loaded. God says, don't gamble with me. Don't take a chance. I'm God. This is my universe. I made it, and it's going to be for my glory. It's for my purpose. Now, do you want to cooperate? you want to get in step with God or continue in rebellion? Well, his will is going to prevail, friends. Mine won't, yours won't, but God's will will prevail. Oh, that you and I get in step with him and be at peace with him, being justified by faith. Until next time, may God richly bless you. I hope you're comforted by the reality that God will prevail and he will fulfill his purpose. 
If you haven't yet surrendered your life to him and want to know more, I invite you to visit our website, ttb.org, and click on the button that says, How Can I Know God? There you'll find several resources that we've set aside just for you. Or if you'd like a few of these resources mailed to you, please call us at 1-800-65-BIBLE. Have you ever felt that you were being put through the fire of trials? Maybe you're going through some trials right now. Well, if so, join us tomorrow. As Dr. McGee tells us that God's Word has some words of encouragement about the purpose for our trials. I'm Steve Schwetz, and I'll be here saving a seat on the Bible bus just for you. Jesus made it all, all to be my own. Sin had left a crimson stain, be washed in white as snow. We're grateful for the faithful and generous support of Through the Bible's partners who are being used by God to take the whole word to the whole world.